Disappearances can happen all over the world to anyone. Whether it's somebody who just got themselves lost or a malicious party planned it, location is very important. Today, we'll look at a case that should have been easy to solve because it was contained on a ship. Let's dive in and take a look at what happened, or what we don't know happened, to Amy Lynn Bradley. Born in Petersburg, Virginia on May 12, 1974, Amy was only 23 when she joined her family upon the Royal Caribbean cruise ship Rhapsody of the Sea. It was March 21, 1998, when the cruise liner left Aruba inbound for Caraco. The family would enjoy three days aboard the ship before their nightmare began. On the morning of the 24th, Amy was enjoying herself, partying and drinking with the ship's band Blue Orchard. Band member Alistair Douglas stated he parted ways with Amy about one in the morning, and from here we have a bit of a time jump because nobody knows what happened between one and five a.m. to Amy. The next person to see her was her father, who stated that she was on the balcony of her cabin sleeping soundly at 5.15 a.m. So far, so good. But it was only 30 to 45 minutes later when her father returned, she was missing, leaving her shoes and taking her cigarettes and lighter with her. Her father stated, When I couldn't find her, I didn't know what to think, because it was very unlike Amy to leave without telling us where she was going. So now we have a missing person aboard a ship. Pretty easy solution, right? You just search the ship. It's not like she could have gone very far. Well, that's what you'd like to think. The family asked the crew to keep the ship on the water, so that if there was a possible kidnapping, there'd be nowhere to escape to. But the crew said, mm, nah, and they docked at Caraco on time, and let everybody disembark before the search commenced. A search that lasted five days, searching the ship and the surrounding waters until, shockingly, they didn't find anybody, and they had to give up. But the questions and torment to the family didn't stop there, as the following years would paint a pretty obvious picture to some about what happened to Amy after several people came forward saying they ran into her or saw a picture of her. In August of 1998, two Canadian tourists claimed they saw Amy on the beaches of Caraco because she had the exact same tattoos. A Tasmanian devil spinning a basketball on her shoulder, a sun on her lower back, a Chinese symbol on her right ankle, and a gecko lizard on her navel. Next, a soldier from the U.S. Navy claims that he met Amy at a brothel. The woman in question approached him, saying, I'm Amy Bradley, I'm here against my will, and begged him to save her. He sat on the information instead because he was worried that he would get in trouble for visiting a brothel. Could have been a hero, but that's what he did instead. Later in 2005, witness Judy Marrer claimed that she saw Amy in a department store bathroom in Barbados. She says a woman came in followed by three men who were threatening her if she didn't go through with some kind of deal. After the men left, she approached, asking if she was okay, and the woman explained that she's Amy from Virginia, before the men returned and took her out of the bathroom. Judy called authorities, who made a composite sketch of the three men and Amy, but they were all never found. The family believes that the crew of the ship were to blame for her initial disappearance. That night, she was showered in attention, and the staff took many pictures of her. Now, what would that be for? The obvious answer is that she was targeted for trafficking, and unfortunately, they got what they wanted. In 2005, the Bradley family received a photo of a woman described as Jazz, who was a sex worker in the Caribbean, and the FBI believes it was Amy. Unfortunately, the source of the photo has never been uncovered. Amy was officially declared dead March 24th of 2010, but I personally don't believe that. This case is beyond frustrating. How could there be so many opportunities for possibly Amy to be reaching out to people, yet she still slipped through the cracks? When people usually go missing, we never see them again. But in this case, she keeps trying to come back, and yet nobody wants to give her the hand that she's reaching out for. I hope that she's still out there and that she doesn't give up, and I hope that spreading awareness of her and others like her will make us a little less resistant to help in the future. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more true crime, 
horror oddities, and bad horror movie reviews. Game with me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, and as always, be well.